clear ones that have that those same frills. Right, but they're right. not. Those are in a different group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, those also. Um, let me just make a quick check. But I think they have like pretty different tentacle, like modified tentacles. Like they don't quite look like that. Oh. But a lot of similarities. Yes. And yeah, the swimming mm -hmm. looks sort of similar for sure. Yeah. Love it. All right. But this is a neat uh, change in pace for like, I guess, rock formations that we've been seeing. These look more sedimentary. Yeah, yeah they look are. Like, uh, carbonate rocks. Look pretty uh, chalky almost, but we'll probably have to take a sample to mm -hmm. see just to be sure. Yeah, um, dive bot team, what have you picked up so far from laser readings? Um, if you have any uh, thoughts on I believe what another the rock is the made background. out of. Oh, sorry. Okay, all right, we're gonna get updates later. That fish looks like an O-fitted, and we've actually been seeing a lot. Cuskiel. Mm -hmm. And all this carbonate question mark rock looks like it has a light layer of sediment on it. I don't think bio has been too high yet. These are cool layers. Whoa. Ledge. I'm gonna try and get further out in front, okay. Sarah, sure. and then pan the camera up a bit more and lock it there. Boop, boop, boop. There we go, stay, stay, go back. Come up. <clears throat> Yeah, that'll probably be good there. Yeah, okay. It's like, it it's not running away on its own, is it? It's just when it's being functioned? Yep. Okay. It's function. Which sometimes I can get it to stop, and then other times it, it doesn't matter what I click, Roger. it just goes. So yeah, I keep coming up there. Okay. Okay, no, that is from just now. Okay, we were wrong on the pelagic area. Something totally different, says Steve. Well, it's the pelagic is the family. I think it's just the uh part, but the epinastes is the genus. Oh yeah, you're right. There are two gene genera within yeah. pelagic thyroids. It's the other one. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And the only one in the Noah guide, I think, is the epinastes, aka headless chicken monster. <laughs> Is that like its official common name? I was say, yeah, how did that name come about? <laughs> Do y'all know? It just kind of looks like one I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that is the common name that it goes by. I feel like sometimes people are sitting in vans just like this and they're like, <laughs> it looks like that Chrysogorgia has saddlebags on it, like the yeah. pot, pot belly <laughs> morph <laughs> balasoma sponge or whatever, balasoma pot belly. Like I've been on. Oh, that's on called a pot belly? Still feel okay uh, there, no, not that one, but oh. there are other ones. Red Sander, come down a little. Uh, no, just leave it like are that. Just okay. from people. I'm going to shut the tilt off for a little bit. Yeah. Calling them that enough. <laughs> mm. I think we just passed some sort of sea slug. Look like a sea uh, cucumber, cucumber down here cucumber. at the bottom. It had like two antennae. Can we see that? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, no, maybe it's not that bad. It is off. But. Mm. Yes. Three. These rocks are so it's cool. Right the trail. It looks like balls of dough. Yeah, they look like they fold over on each other. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. Could be know. like an erosional surface, or that could be how they formed. Not sure yet. Mm-hmm. Little squid type thing. Or something behind that boulder. Given that these oh, oh yeah, that yeah. anemone maybe. We um, might find steep cliffs out here again. So we finished that 30 meter move. I think we're good to keep going because Divebot team is troubleshooting something right now, slash okay. maybe participating in an interaction. Um, so we'll just keep going for now. Thank you. Sounds good. Are we able to look at this anemone down here?
Wow, that's huge. Yeah, oh that my is gosh. big. That is. Okay, go ahead and zoom. A lot of marine snow up here mm -hmm. in this shallow, shallower depths. Well, yeah, it's hard to tell what this is without a frontal view. Kind of looks like Lipanema, but no, I don't it's know. It's not Lipanema. Okay. Yeah. All right, full wide. Do they? That's good. Thanks. Do they have like? They don't have that big base. What's the? Lipanema is the pom pom anemone. It's the one's got all kinds of tentacles. Mm. <laughs> They're very um, poofy. Mm. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Like usually even more so looking than that. Yeah. we look at what that is? Oh, I didn't even catch that. So for the back row for sure. today with no stone air, it's kind of particularly, in general it's true, but uh, I know you can't get everything, but okay. it's more particularly important. Try and call stuff as it's in the top half of the screen. Gotcha. Got it. So we're not doubling back to it. We don't have a sonar looking out either on Atalantis, so I'm trying to stay out more. Okay, Roger. Um, yeah, any of... Go ahead and zoom. Actinostola like an anemone. Got a crinoid. red crinoid. Some bamboo corals. And then what are all the black dots all over this? Oh, wow. Um, little anemones? Yeah. Yeah. But they're really dark. And it looks like they have big bases almost. Yeah, like really... Huh. They look like eyelashes. <laughs> Strange, there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Kay. That's cool. Are we able to pan to the coral a little bit? Or which one? Or the one right there. You can mm -hmm. also see on the Some rock where mm -hmm. there have been other bamboos that have attached, like they've broken off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe Catch. previous anemones. Well, see all the white? things too like uh this oh, those are mm -hmm. this barnacles. and that yeah would it be possible to zoom on what's right by the lasers right now the white thing sticking out like a fortune cookie almost we're gonna have to go here i don't have a view okay uh, sure yeah we'll see if we see more sand. on upper rocks huh. yeah full wide amber thanks it's also something on that crinoid over there mm -hmm. mm. i thought i saw maybe a squat there. lobster or something but not sure There are those. Uh, there were a couple Holotherians here that we passed by that really blended in. These rocks are fascinating. Mm -hmm. Looks like something you'd find in like Colorado or something. Like it. It looks like there's, um, you know, like weathered layers in between, less, more weathered layers in between less weathered layers. Mm -hmm. Kind of fascinating. Like, what's that from? Another big crinoid. Oh, cool. These are beautiful. Wow, look at the coral over there. Oh. Um, you said what time, Cheyenne, was it that uh, We'd have to recover. Uh, it'll take us about an hour and 15 minutes to recover, so about 3.45. 3.45, got it. Are we not, are we Wait. recovering at 1,700 or 1,600? I was going off at 1,600. So Wait, that would that's be 4 p.m. Yeah, are we not recovering at 4? That's what the board said. Sure, but 3.45, leaving at 3.45. Oh, sorry, 2.45. That's what I oh, thought. Okay, <laughs> I was I like, to make I sure. don't know, math doesn't yep. work. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, 245. Okay. Yeah, yeah a bunch of bamboos there. there. Something there. I actually do that quite often, is I'll just like say an hour off. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> when too, I'm planning okay. and then I'll be like, wait, I don't actually have time to do this. <laughs> I thought I gave myself an extra hour. <laughs> So Cheyenne, whenever this ship move is done, mm -hmm. I think we might want to stop and look around a little. These features are pretty cool. Yeah, we've got two meters, so it's okay. pretty much done. Okay. Oh, uh, I think it's a bit too far away, but looks like a Christ the Christ of Orgid. Orgid, Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's yeah, it's a bit too risky. I think there's another one over here, if we can look at that one. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really interesting shapes in this rock, all those lines. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, yeah, that is one. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. But yeah, it's pretty. Could we look at this one and then that one, please? I think it's so interesting how steeply sloping this area is. Oh, oh, never mind. It's the web interaction. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was a shark in like one of the cameras. <laughs> wow, oh look from the pilot cam, look at that rock, that's incredible. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. Somebody in the chat says it looks like melted ice cream. Mm-hmm. Some purpley thing to the left. I think we're a bit far away for it though. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah. I think this is gonna just have to be quick, but we'll get a couple mm -hmm. pictures. That looks like a maybe a Bluto. That's what I was thinking. But, oh yeah, because of the, the branching. zigzag, mm -hmm. and it's not as dense as Janiculata. That's good on the cool. zoom, thank you. Okay, full light. And then, oh, there's a, it's an Aridogorgia, Magnus Boralis, on the edge of that. And a huge anemone, my goodness. Or is that a crinoid? I, <laughs> it's just showing up to its tentacles. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a big something. Maybe a, a star. Go ahead and zoom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice original gorgeous. with something on it. Don't know what that is. Maybe a yeah. mollusk? I don't know. Look at how that's waving. Mm -hmm. Putting on a show. Um. Hannaford, if we could go around, I don't know how much tether you have or, or safety, but uh, if we could look at that Brazingit sea star, maybe go around Yeah, a we'll bit. try it. Yeah. That one's huge. Yeah. Man. Fix that. Massive. Look at that, a little white sea star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Double feature. Wow. That's oh, a good wow. shot, yeah. Very cool. Okay, go ahead and zoom. So that thing, I don't know, one of its arms must be at least 30, <laughs> 35 centimeters. That's incredible. So from arm tip to arm tip, that's like, you know, 60, 70 centimeters or something. Huge. Right? It's like the length of somebody's arm. Yeah. You getting that in still cam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're, we okay, got it. Okay, that looks great. And then I don't know if we could do a zoom from afar or briefly on the white sea star to the right. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, zoom in. Some sort of eel. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Looks like a goni asteroid, maybe? It's one of those white right. ones with the puffed out chest. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Right. I think so we're good many here. Like Thank that. you. 
That's good, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it looks like a goniasterid. How big do we think that one is? Um, um, smaller, like 10 centimeters across, a little more than that maybe, yeah. from mm -hmm. arm to arm. Really cool rocks. Feather star bathing in the current. Unstalked. Um, if we can look at that quickly. Uh, Hannah, for just so we understand your perspective, what, what here in this area is safe or unsafe or right. what's on your mind? Uh, no, we can go wherever you want. I just want to okay. be more out front of Atalanta, so it's just less time for okay. zooming and stuff okay. like that. So the quicker they get called in, the better. But even still, like if we're if, if we're too far below, I'm gonna want to pop up so we can get okay. a look at the just prize. Okay, just interject. It depends on the terrain. Yep, mm -hmm. I will. Yep. We can also um, do even. Go ahead and zoom. We can also do even smaller ship moves. That will give up more opportunities. Looks like a paramarsid. Mm -hmm. um, With some urchins on it. I don't have any any inclination one way or the other, or any uh, preference. All right, I think we're good. Uh, could we actually zoom actually a little bit more on the associates, if that's possible? I think they're anemones. Oh yeah, those are definitely anemones. Uh, now that I see anemones, it. snake star. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right, we'll watch. Um, so right now the ship is not moving, right? Right. Yep. And we're all stopped up uh, pretty much. This is the extensive, this is as far away as we can get from Atalanta. OK, could we potentially then just look at one more thing? I'm curious about all these little things that are yeah, on yeah. the sides of the rock, and then we can uh, yep. get and moving again. And then if possible, could we try to uh, uh, fire at that yellow coral? Yep. All right, sure. we'll do that first then, too. Do you want to... I was going to say, this top one might be easier. Uh, is that know. the same thing? Not the same thing, uh -huh. but that one is kind of in like a tough spot. Or is that a yellow bamboo? I think it's a yellow bamboo, but I can't quite tell. Yeah, if we could zoom on that quickly. That one might be, a, I don't know, even harder to focus on. I'm going to step away for a moment as I go to do an interaction. So, okay, so, so there stop I want to you. go with the dive bot. So maybe bring the ship in a bit closer. What can you do? Yeah. Uh, the, most ex the most aggressive move you can do that way. Okay. It's not It's not going to be super aggressive. Yeah, that might just take us away. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Okay, I see that. Maybe leave it. Uh, go ahead and zoom. Hard to tell from here. That is really hard to tell. Is that very sparsely branched a it's too yeah, like really it needs to go like that way yeah but anything like yeah leave it there um, kind of looks yeah, like it's, it's a bamboo, bamboo. It's but a it's bamboo really it's yellow. like almost wavy branched but yeah we've collected a couple of those yellow bamboos and it looks almost like there's a ramelagorgia there too this purple thing mm. it's hard to tell right it's in turnodal i don't think i see a node there at the branch but again very hard to tell yeah uh okay so dive bot team did you want to try for the uh lower down yellow coral uh yeah the one that's slightly bigger okay okay and maybe it'll be, it'll when if it's drifting in any other direction, it'll be firing over water. So I don't know if that makes it easier for your reading. That's fine. We'll be uh, doing a longer exposure to try to capture it. Okay. So if I go in forward, you're going to be quite elevated over. Maybe I can like back the sub into it. Mm-hmm. Um, try that. Very small chrysogorgid and squat lobster next to it.
Hey Sarah, uh, Atalanta, C could you could you zoom in uh, into the feature we're trying to uh, exactly? Yeah, thanks. I, so I'm trying to see when, when the laser hits on the on the coral. Yeah. So Sarah, if you could tilt the camera down at all on, on oh, Atalanta, yeah. then I can do a little more of a zoom. Okay, let's try that. And up a little, whoa, wild. A great aim, autopilot, <laughs> uh <-huh>. a.k.a. Mike. <laughs> mm. Today, Mike has his glasses, uh, so I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel very good about, about this one. Full wide. He went into the abyss. Alright, trying again. This does look... And Kevin here is uh, coaching Coralie, so I think Coralie may be able to get the very first uh, science, uh, scientist science, uh, rather, of a pigment from that uh, little perching coral. So, uh, how does it feel, Coralie? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, she oh, she doesn't have the... She says that this is amazing and, sp <laughs> and she's super excited. <laughs> Why does the... Uh. Yeah, and I think we got a couple of really good exposures from before, so uh, I, think, I think we're good on that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I, I wasn't looking at the at the data, uh, but uh, but I suspect that when Kevin says, as an engineer that he is, that we have good exposures, that means that we have terrific uh, data that we can interpret. So my prediction is that we'll we'll see um, some of this green uh, pigment that we could see in the visual, uh, which is probably chlorophyll. Uh, I would make a bet on that. Uh, but we'll, we'll verify that when we look at the numbers. But uh, this is very exciting. Uh, and I'm excited for Coralie again that uh, she gets she gets to hit the fire laser at the right time we get the nice science uh, data. So it's great. She says thank you. She's very excited. She's going uh -huh. to ro go back and write a paper about it right now. So uh, this is uh -huh. all good. I'm just curious what that is lurking in the back there. Yeah, I was trying to make out what it could be, but... Go ahead and zoom. And what? again, then we can look at those really cool sort of rock A uh, coral. lines. Some kind of coral. Lilipathies? I don't think it's... I, don't I, I was thinking black coral up until we got closer, oh, but... That's the oh. end of our leash, unfortunately. Oh, that's okay. right. Oh, it's so hard to tell. Yeah, maybe it is a black coral. Star baddies, I don't know. Okay, Something. all right, thanks. Thanks. All right, full wide. Cool to see the rock. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, okay. So we're yeah. starting to have to really leave this feature maybe Let's on this corner, like we're really at distance sure. here. So would, uh, would you be comfortable ascending a bit more? Oh, yeah. I think okay. it's just going to, but it, it goes away from us, right? I can't really go forward anymore. Right. Um, okay, Cheyenne, if you could call in another move in the direction we were going before. Yeah. Which was, what direction is that? That's now kind of changed a bit, maybe. No, it's, it's just uh, 60. 
So it was zero six zero, which is yeah. this current heading, uh, right around here. That. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. It is supposed to be up slow. Right. Um, you can actually see in Herc's sonar, like here's sixty degrees. Yep. See the There's strike some, there. Something so we're back just gonna there. skirt it. Yeah. So if okay. we could do another like, um, you know, Wait, if we could go in. Uh, so what way can we go? Uh, forty. Maybe. No, but if we did a move or two at uh, oh, yeah. 20, 20 degrees off this, what's this like two twenty five? If we could do two forty five, we could get into the slope more. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, let's do that then. Yeah. Still be kind of skirting our, along. Yeah, it, that's okay. Two two forty five would be. We'd be going back down. We could, um, I asked about 270, so like straight across, mm -hmm. and Oriel said that's probably going to be okay. Yeah, 270, if you can do it, that's great. Okay, yeah. let's right. try that then. Where was waypoint one on high pack, um, Cheyenne? Oh, back there. Okay, got it. All right. All right. Yeah, that's okay. I think we're really, I don't know that we need to stick to the exact coordinates too much you know we really are limited by what how the ship can move but would like to stay I believe over this interesting terrain and and do whatever is best for the dive bot team um, so please chime in if there are certain types of features or, or whatever that are best for you sounds good these rock formations are so cool they're very cool they look like um, like waves almost I'm also I'm putting in very short ship moves, so we have a lot of ability to stop. Okay, great. I really wish I knew more geologically about like these kind of mushroom top shapes that we're seeing. I know. What causes that? There, I know, are were a few um, scientists ashore kind of chiming in on the geology last chat, and they were also pretty stumped by some of the that those lines that were being seen in the rock, those kind of vertical lines. It almost reminds me of <clears throat> like when I was uh, doing work in Antarctica near all the huge icebergs there, the shape of the, the icebergs or the, the patterns along the icebergs kind of tell you a story of their history. And when you would see those lines, that would be from when at some point that had been underwater and, and uh, as ice melted, all the trapped air bubbles would stream towards the surface and they would leave kind of carve in those lines and so I wonder you know what uh, what fluid movement or or 
yeah, what could it be? What movement is causing those lines in these rocks? Yeah, great. What, something small? I thought I saw like some coral, but it's just lines in the rock. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So are we kind of on top of this now? Does it look like to the right of us, like it flattens out a bit or? Um, I'd say it flattens out. It's just like not super steep, like it goes up like this. So okay. it doesn't seem flat, just yeah. kind of. <laughs> It's like steady, even, <laughs> easy slope. It's like we went from seeing bio to not seeing no bio. We zoom in right here. I don't know if that's something, but might as well try. Come down a little bit on Atalanta there. Come down. We'll take anything we can get. <laughs> yeah. Looks like there's like a sea cucumber below. It's like a, uh, oh, I see it below. Uh, like down under the ledge. Looks like a. Sh this looks like a big shrimp, maybe. Yeah. 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 Ten centimeter long shrimp. Go ahead, zoom. You're uh, you're off, SPL. I thought I saw like two huge antennae, which I guess I did. Ooh, look at it go. Oh yeah, long legs. Do we have like an idea what kind of shrimp this is? Daddy long legs shrimp. <laughs> no, don't write that. <laughs> don't believe um, everything I say. That would be. That would be a good common name, though. I mean, look at that. That I looks would. just like I a daddy say long yeah. legs. <laughs> um, look at the antennas. Uh, some kind of Caribbean shrimp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if it's a nematocarcinid. I think we're good. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. And then there was a right. cu cucumber watch. down under us a little bit. If uh, if we're waiting. Way down there. Yeah. Sorry, I know that's not upper, <laughs> upper third. Looks spiky. Go ahead and zoom. Oh no, it doesn't really apply when right. we're not, we're like uh, well, we are moving actually. Never mind. To not as steep. Yeah. Ooh. Look at that. Ooh. I don't think we've seen one this color, have we? Oh, Give us a show. It's lifting up. Give us a show. <laughs> Are you scared? I think it's some kind of synolactid, but let's look. Yeah, it's a little different. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, that's good, thanks. I would okay, just put it, put it in a synolactid of some kind. Oh, there's, see the still cam? This oh, yeah. blue orb. That <laughs> does look cool. Some sort of blue thing right out of frame. 
There must be so many tiny little cool things we I just know. never ever notice. I'm always wondering how many polychaetes we miss. I wonder what that could be. Maybe a polychaete. I, I don't know. know. Well, with no warning whatsoever, back over sand. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe after this one, I don't know, do you want to start trying to go forward again? Yeah. Yeah, when, whenever you want. Yeah. I just put in another ship. Maybe, sure, let's, let's do this, finish out this one. And then uh, maybe we can try and scooch forward again. Sounds good. We can just make a pretty pattern on do my Do some back. interesting zigzags, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spell out Nautilus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Spell out noodles. <laughs> Noodlers. Divot team, I'm guessing the rocky features are much more interesting to you than sand, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Glad we we all, all agree. <laughs> Too bad there's no rocks to pick up around here. You know what? This is a thin layer of sediment, definitely like covering a whole bunch of rock. Just yeah, not 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 steep enough for it to slide away. Uh, go ahead and come down a bit on Atalanta. Okay. Nice. There's an anemone off in the distance. Just out of reach. <laughs> just out of reach. Everything is just out of reach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not I see just you're a, strung a out. fair bit. Out yeah. Of oh, reach. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's a bit deceiving today. We have the Atlanta camera more so forward than usually. So if you uh, like, even see us in there, we're pretty far ahead. Mm -hmm. What's it like if we back up a bit? Is that just the wall again? Backing up. Um, yeah, at some point, I think it'll be the ledge that we were on earlier. We're in about the same place. Mm -hmm. Would it be an option to descend to it again? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm going to come up a little bit if you're backing up. Uh, no, stay where we are because we're going down slope, right? So okay. You'll get the delta that way. So there it is. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Got it. It's right there. So, is it Cheyenne that we now kind of do have the capability to skirt along that, this ledge westward? Yeah, we can, we can continue west. Okay, then maybe let's just shoot for that. If it looks like it continues, which I think it the does. Uh, yeah. This almost reminds me of pie crust. Mm -hmm. Will the ledge be good for the laser, though? Like if we're yeah, dive right bot team. How is it? how is that for you? I mean, you guys go along the the ledge for a while, and if we see any rocks, then we'll call them out or some okay. coral. 
All right. Like that yellow coral was very nice. Okay, sounds <laughs> good. We will it. keep our eye out for colored coral. Maybe, maybe and we'll see some crazy gorgeous or something. Come on down a bit on Atalanta. Okay. It's also an option, I believe, always to, uh, if you wanted, I don't know that we could collect it, but if you wanted to like scrape off some of the sediment somewhere here and then try and target that, I, I think that that's something we could do. Uh, sorry, Kevin, you're not on. I was turning on sure. Pablo's. Uh, <laughs> One of the things we'll want to do eventually when we get a nice flat rock that we can land on is scrape off the top so we get the white uh, powdery mm -hmm. stuff and then land. And then we're going to turn on one of the other uh, UV sources that we have mm -hmm. and see if everything fluoresces. But uh, we last time we actually had the, all of the uh, lights turn off except for the, the one. So we might want to be doing one of those again. On okay. The and that would be a flat surface, ideally. Flat surface, yeah. Okay. Nice, stable, flat surface. Okay. Flat carbonate surface. I imagine that's always going to be something we'll have to, yeah, s to to move, move the sand off of. Yes, please. Yeah. Two seven zero, uh, Michael will be heading which way? Uh, for, like, perspective. Uh, well, we're facing pretty much north into the this yep. little ledge. Right. So we'll just be like crabbing along. Okay. Along right. it like this. I didn't know if he wanted to angle more like two nine zero like before try and push cl into it if it's moving away a little. Uh, like two nine zeros here. Oh, like that. Yeah. So just but do you want to you want to look at it? Whatever is better for you. I don't know if two seven zero is going to end up having us strung out trying to stay along this feature. It w it will go away from it. Yeah. yeah. So maybe two nine zero is better if that's what they were moving before and that was working okay. We can. We were doing two seven. Can they do two nine? Two, two nine nines zero? when we first came up, right? Is what the previous group had been doing. Yes. That's better if they can do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll ask. Okay. Thanks. Oriel says we can try. Okay. Could we look at, zoom in on some of the coral to the yeah, left there? Sure. Thanks. I think that one all the way to the right is dead, so the central one right there would be good. Okay. Hoping we see more of those, like, urchin or anemones or whatever oh yeah, those that were all over fortune the wall. cookie things were i know i want to know what the fortune cookies were yeah uh, go ahead zoom there are no fortune cookies in still cam right Hmm. Prim, no. No. Oh. Um. Um. I'm not sure. I have. It's hard That's to tell. Kind of looks primnoity. Okay. All right. Thank for you. What? Yeah, sorry, it's not very That's good. Okay. It's all right. Pretty far away. Looks like there's a unstalked, I mean, unbranched from Noah next to it. That longer one. Do you see any no no uh, bands on it all? Um, from this angle, no. This one, too. It's so hard. So it, hard to mm, tell, yeah. 
No, nope, not totally focused. All right, I'm going to put in a 290. Sounds good. Something floating. <clears throat> oh, bridge now. Come closer. <laughs> what are you, Partial jelly thing? Zoom? Yeah, sure. Might just be detritus, might be a jelly, who knows? Um. <laughs> I think it's just detritus. But a really, ah. Uh, Hard to tell. Yeah, mucus of some kind. That's kind of what it what? looks like when we take bamboo samples up to the lab. Ugh. They are super <laughs> mucusy corals. The rest are not so really mucusy, but the bamboos slime all over the place, and the, it looks like layers of that, almost like brownish mucus that comes off of them, and you it's can like grody. take that away, and then they're pretty and pink underneath again. So not it's cute. We're really stretched oh, I, out here. You can zoom in right. on it from here. It might yeah. tell you something, but go ahead. What are you? Yeah, I am twisted Whoa. right around. What are you? Cool. Do you want me to turn my auto heading off for a minute? Or? Uh, so, yeah, sure. So you can get over there. Wait, okay. I don't, I don't know what that Very is. Very thick. And then it looks like what you know those decorator crabs some of them have like a, a light pink version of this that they carry okay, around on their backs. yeah that's good yeah i gotta catch up they're yep. way behind that's fine all right i will spin back around if i can um i don't know So leave that off for a minute, Sarah, right till I get closer to you. Okay. Yeah, so we're going way off of it now. I guess it curves around there a bit. Yeah. hard to stay on top of it. Yeah. We can always do the zigzag springing right. the ship up. Yeah, I think yeah, that's that was what we're the gonna original have to do. Plan, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I suppose after this, let's zag up again and then over. Sounds good. Yeah, it's a little frustrating when it, it doesn't say, like when it goes flat on top of this too. You know. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to it. Right. I, like yeah, um, we could just keep traveling up and see how it evolves. Yeah. Yeah. All right, put the auto heading back on now. All right. If you wish. We're almost done with this move. I want to see it through so yep. we know if we have the option to go 290 for later. Okay.
And then what do you figure the ship is going to be able to do going uh, northeast? Um, probably we're at 60, it's probably 30. Yeah. Be good. Maybe 20. Yeah, 30 would be good. That's pretty. Pretty straight up. Yep. Uh, might as well come on down, uh, Sarah, see what's down here anyway. All right. Maybe hold here for a second and then face out. Let's t we're gonna go northeast anyway. Let's face out that way. Okay. And then uh, we'll carry on. So say thirty degrees. Yep. Zero three zero. So that was good. So okay. 290 is an option. Okay, let's zag uh, back up yeah, okay. that direction now. Might as well just see if, if there's another feature or if there's at least a flat spot we can sit down and maybe try and scrape away some sediment and do the dive bot reading. All right, sounds good. Do you want to go like as north as possible? Uh, sure, yeah. All right, keep coming down. All right. Oh, see the ledge there. Yeah. All right. Are we still thinking the four o'clock recovery? Yes, uh, we are. And priority before then is really just whatever y'all want to get done before like 2:45. We'll we can we'll do our best to try and make that th those tasks happen. Okay, yeah, I think uh, in in order would be uh, land on one of these flat features that uh, yep. Kevin explained earlier. Yeah, maybe scrape it out before uh, with the arm if we can, just to see if we can expose some of the mm -hmm. underlying uh, mineral. Uh, so we'll yeah. Uh, land there, sit there for 10 minutes perhaps, uh, do a little bit of uh, measurements there, uh, then find a flippable uh, boulder, uh, something we can just flip uh, upside down to take a look at what's under uh, this uh, mm -hmm. and collect some of that uh, for lab analysis. Do you and want me to keep coming down, yeah. Michael? And lastly, uh, hold here. Okay. lastly, do a little bit of uh, uh, documentary, uh, artistic uh, viewpoints from Atalanta of uh, Hercules uh, shooting. Uh, okay. That'll, that'll do it for us. Okay. Um, so would like the kind of rocks below us be something that you were interested in? Or I don't know how much we can actually get in towards those. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't know if we're too close to the ledge for yeah, comfort. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, that's yeah. a little difficult. To okay, get then we'll just go straight north and see if we can come over a good surface to at least land on first. And yeah. Oh, a little shark. I don't know how many loose rocks y'all were seeing earlier. I Maybe haven't not. seen too many except for under the ledge. Mm. There are some nice loose rocks and... Uh, Also 
also I can't quite tell, but I don't think that's a shark. Yeah, as soon as I said <laughs> it, I was like, that's not moving like a shark. I'm going to reset your DVL again. Sure. There we go. So, yeah. so welcome back everybody. I am back on SPL. I'm your host, Daniel, and we'll be having you all aboard to answer your questions. And if you're wondering what we're up to, we come into every dive with sort of a rough understanding of the topography where we're going, but not, um, not very detailed, and so we'll we also come down with some goals that we'd like to accomplish, especially when the laser dive bot team is on, that they have um, certain testing goals, measurements that they'd like to make. Uh, and so we're right now trying to find a good spot to be able to accomplish some of those, um, while also managing sort of the limitations of how the ship can move through the water based on, right now I think mostly current is the issue. Mm -hmm. So the there might be some like flippable flat rocks like that one under the lasers I don't know if that's ideal or not um, and then uh, that's looking that flattens out down there but yeah, also on top of the ledges they're not flat but if it works for the dive bot team they're probably better because they're probably less sediment collected yeah on them. and then that's landable yeah it's landable so it's not flat there's a slope but yeah. if that's okay yep. yeah that works Okay, so would we like to then not put in another ship move after this and maybe try and landing on top first? That's it. Okay. Uh, you're off, pa Pablo. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Maybe one option would be to grab one of these rocks from here and bring it top yeah, to the, we to the, try that. To the yeah. flat. Okay. Um, that will, yep. Let's see what... Th this one is quite large, this one I was after. So let's just see. Maybe we can get it up on yeah. the porch. Um, okay, uh, come on down. Atalanta. Hmm. It's cool if I got a picture. And look down at uh, her okay. if you can. Yeah. I got 19. Okay, this works. You're still above the ledge. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. Do you want to stop the uh, ship for picking up no. the rock? Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, got it. I don't think so. Let's just go for it here. I'll come down a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, just mind. You can see the ledge there anyway. Yeah. Just keep it in your view. Yeah. That's perhaps it's too big. Too big, you think? Maybe we'll see. If it's flat enough, maybe it's side grabbable. I know it's otherwise good, eh? Oh no, maybe not. Yeah, it looks promising. It's don't break in half. Yes. Oh, nice. Oh. Look at that. That's nice. That's really nice. Coming up over the ledge a little bit, yeah. just so you know. Yeah. It will not be a sample yet, no. We're just going to pick it up and bring it up somewhere where we might be able to measure it more comfortably. Yeah, it's a proto sample. Yep. 
Got it, we're just making sure. Loopy's ready. Loopy is ready. I am. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, start coming up on Atalanta there. Coming up. So is that the test laser light that's on right now? It's the targeting laser, yeah. No, the targeting. And then I am also taking a uh, random sample. Okay. So it's less, if we just keep going on this heading, it's not that far until it's less slopey. Right, yeah. Maybe we'll do Might that. Well this, is, this is a bit steep. A rock might roll down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you at home who are wondering where we are, so we are about 1,426 meters below the ocean surface. And these rocks look like they could be sedimentary rocks. Uh, some sort of carbonate material, meaning that it's made of calcium carbonate. But we can also find uh, other igneous rocks around here as well. So that's a big reason why we take samples from this area of the ocean. part on this or the less steep part on the sonar we're about 120 130 meters from it okay um is this up ahead michael starting to look flat enough for you or would you like to continue a little flatter would be better okay maybe let's put in a small move yeah, we're we're still moving. We up, are still so moving. Okay, yeah. great. If this isn't flat enough, we could always move back down to the base. Yeah, but that had a lot That's of sand on it. That's gonna be heavily oh. sedimented. Yeah. I think like, well, just looking at the contour lines. Yeah, yeah, it gets it a little more spaced. Out. And in the sonar, it's kind of indicated. Unless we just want to try here, like this is not. It's a slope, but it's not uh, not as steep as before. Yeah. There's the coral. I'll get out of the way of that, and then because uh, that only looks like there's a little bit of sediment there. Yeah, that could be scraped away. Yeah, if you think that that's landable and that we could put the rock down there too, that would that yeah. Would, yeah. Might as well try. Yeah. What's the suction pump on uh, right now? Sarah, can you check that out? Is that on the... Zero. Is it, are the uh, jars, I mean, is it on the flush uh, jar? Let's see. Oh yeah, we could slurp up a bunch of sand and spit yeah, that'd, it out. that'd be better. It'll work better. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Come down a little bit. <clears throat> yeah.
funny to see Herc sitting at the single. <laughs> You can see an Atalanta cam, how sloped of the mm -hmm. edge this is, too. Seems fairly smooth compared to what we've seen before. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of terraces going along. So we are now going to try and expose some of the rock surface. Uh, and trying to get away some of the sand rather than scraping we're going to try and slurp and then that'll just run through the whole system out the, All right, run the exhaust basically. Run the pump on uh, I don't know 30%. Alright. Wash. Mm -hmm. Wash it down. Add 30. More. 50. The terrible grip I got here. <laughs> We're at 50. There's some movement in the 70. jar a little. There we go. Oh, there we go. Something's getting a ride in there. The background falls on the arm. Mm. Right. Just come wide on the Zeus, please. Is it still doing the thing where you start to get blown uh, away? Turn the. No, that's not too bad at all. Turn the pump off. Yeah, it is uh, to some extent. No. <laughs> So for those in the oh, back row who maybe aren't aware of this or those online, the Herc pilot has, is operating a separate console. You know, the arm is separate from the, the vehicle driving console. And uh, so it's really quite difficult to be doing both positioning the sub and operating the arm at once. Ah, there we go. It's almost like learning a new instrument. So I've got to turn the bender off on that because it's. Kim. Where is that? Okay, pump on whatever it was before. There was a 70? 70. Yeah. Where it really kicked on. All right, we're up to 70. Rock is just like a carbonate. The arm is very unhappy today. It's got a pretty background fault.
Ouais, c'est... We're seeing, I guess, is that us? Oh yeah, that's us scraping away and exposing the white a little bit. So that's cool. And you can see that the rock on the porch fragmented and has that inside it too, so. This is like vacuum cleaning yeah. your car. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a geologist who just has random rocks just littered out in your car, <laughs> just like sucking that right up. Oh, or after a beach day, <laughs> car's all sandy. Yeah. Except here your car is the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> need to like interchange the suction heads to like the flat surface. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> thinking like we should get a duster. That would be interesting. <laughs> well we already got the scoop on board. They did have a one that was like brush for one of the dives. Turn that pump off for a minute. All right. Pumps off. Okay, on. Back on. So how large a surface would you like exposed and how much do you care about like the white being exposed yeah so uh i think that that patch that uh that we're working on is what 20 centimeters mm. yeah i think that's pretty good uh for us and in fact yeah uh, the more white uh the better just for contrast uh. okay but I, th I think i think this is fairly good job here that you know mike is doing what he's done with this uh patch I think that's going to be a good target. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll just do this a little bit here. Give us a bigger target. Maybe exp expose a bit more white. Could draw a target with the white. M Mike, are you trying to write your name there? I was going <laughs> to say, I was going to say, I was like, is he writing? I'm writing Mike. Mike was Mike here. Was here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I spell it W U Z. I don't think anybody's got the patience for that. <laughs> Back next week. <laughs> somebody will. Somebody would could see this and just be like, "What is?" What Finger painting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Pump off. All right. Pumps off. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, keep the zoom in there. Thank you. So Put we want to strap on here. Try sitting at three meters, and then we'll also want to try sitting on top of it uh, where you actually land. Okay.
How's the slurp secure system working? Good. Good. Yeah. It works. Yeah. Let's us do flyby slurps now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's important. <laughs> Need that. Okay. Oh, do we figure out what that black orby thing was? Yeah, um, no, but I think what our guess was pleurobrank, pleurobrank or some kind of nudibrank, maybe it's this, you know, a shell-less or mostly shell-less gastropod of some kind is what it looked like then and what it seemed to continue to look like. Although they're almost sometimes with things like that, like harder to identify when they come up, they're all... They get hard and kind of like um, scrunched up, and and they're not in their fully inflated, normal, um, yeah, shape. So it, it almost sometimes gets more difficult to say what it is. But it, it's some kind of gastropod. It looks like yeah. So it will be at the MCZ, and uh, hopefully folks will argue about it there, looking at it, <laughs> or having requested it. So, okay, approaching a three meter altitude here. Yeah. Probably the, the altimeter is on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is great, Mike. Just uh, stay here until we complain. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, and uh, you know, since we're here, uh, Sarah, I, I will, you know, request a little bit of uh, Atalanta camera game. Uh, yeah, uh, so. You guys can move the ship around like 10 meters here or there if you want to get an angle on Atalanta and then go ahead and zoom in. We're in a really safe place, so you can play around with that. Perfect. And, and Mike, uh, if you can turn off uh, Hercules lights. Yes. For contrast. Wow. Nice. Fascinating. Ah, you guys, it's so dark down here. <laughs> So, do we want to move the ship so Atalanta is a little closer, or are we good here? D yeah, the, the closer we can get to Atalanta, the better. Uh, okay. So, mind the, um, just mind the. Uh, uh, they uh, intentionally turn the lights the off so that for the laser. Yeah, this yeah. is a great, great. Uh, mm. Yeah, I know. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's here. I'll up my iris as much as I can so you can <laughs> sort of see it. Ooh. Ah. Eerie. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, earlier somebody was asking for a more darker and quieter uh, ROV ops. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, right. So assuming we have a good uh, Doppler reading <laughs> of the bottom and, and a good laser, then this should be the future. OK, so uh, what we're seeing is um, a uh, little bit of change. Uh, so one, one thing that we noticed analyzing the carbonates before is that they uh, they do show high amounts of fluorescence, uh, which typically you don't want to see in Raman because it's much more intense than Raman signals. Mm. But this is indicative of uh, two things. Um, one is that it is a very amorphous uh, uh, carbonation, uh, meaning that perhaps uh, biology has something to do uh, with it. And in fact, what we see is uh, 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 fluorescence background from the organic uh, part as well. And uh, it seems like that's one of the ways to to nucleate and to create all these carbonate structures here is to have organic matter being the seed for those crystals uh, mm. that crystallize around. Um, so it's one of the theories to for us to test back in lab uh, with the samples that we collect is to see how much of this interplay between mineral and organic fluorescence are we seeing at the same time? Uh, it, will be, it could be a very interesting um, way to to differentiate between uh, inorganic and organic carbon, which is very important for carbon accounting uh, when you're looking at the ocean as a carbon sink for atmospheric CO2. So pretty mm -hmm. intriguing results, and that's why we're spending some time here to to get as much as we can to to digest better. Yeah, so some of the uh, geologists of Bora also suspected that those uh, organic matter could potentially be foraminifera, which are um, oceanic microorganisms that uh, live throughout and process this uh, carbonate into their own little shells. And they settle on the sea floor, just like in marine snow, and they build up in these rock layers over millions and millions of years.
So that's a potential hypothesis for what we're seeing here. Yeah. Okay. And great. Thanks, thanks, uh, guys uh, online for verifying that. Uh, and, and you know, we just getting you know get more data, and we see fluctuation between uh, organic versus mineral uh, carbon, and I think that's partially due to the to the motion of the of the vehicle, which is a great uh, another great uh, data point for us because it really uh, um, uh, shows that uh, we can do. Uh, we can use the motion of the vehicle itself to really map out what's happening there. So uh, I think that's a really interesting uh, uh, outcome of, of this research as well. Um, so thanks, Mike, for giving us the little dance down there. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. The, yeah, this is, yeah. And uh, I don't know, uh, Amber, if, if you could get this camera pointing here, uh, I would like to show the audience what we're seeing here um, in the in the screen. Uh, yeah, so in... in uh, so yeah, you guys can like adjust the heading, so uh, zoom in out, move the ship around if you need. Yeah, so channel three, you're seeing now this peak that I'm highlighting around 500. Uh, it's gone now because we switched uh, points, but uh, uh, where my arrow is right now in the screen and I'm looking at channel three, uh, and you can see it around 520 uh, in the blue uh, trace up there. Uh, that was a super sharp and intense peak right there. And that is, again, one of these indications of uh, of a mineral um, uh, carbon, which we don't see now. And now I'm looking at the green trace down, down in, the, in the bottom uh, that is more uh, representative of the organic carbon first. And so verification, again, of this uh, dual uh, feature, organic and inorganic uh, carbon here in, uh, as mineral or as organic matter. So this is super exciting for us. And here you can see it again uh, emerging on the top trace um, uh, in this new data point that Kevin just got. So I think this is really, really something for us to to spend some time in the lab uh, and uh, thinking about, because I think this is really, really uh, one of these unexpected uh, findings that we found in this, uh, in this expedition. So really really excited yeah yeah, yeah. Hello, sir everyone this is us doing real life science live over the internet so if you are all just tuning in welcome aboard the exploration vessel nautilus we have people tuning in from all around the world so yeah this data is crucial in us understanding not only the uh, rocks that we are seeing right in front of us, but the role of rocks and the deep ocean within the carbon cycle of Earth. So, uh, these rocks are made up of calcium carbonate, mostly, and the key part in there is carbonate, meaning carbon. So, uh, this is something that is accumulated over time from carbon that is sequestered in the oceans. Uh, our oceans are the biggest carbon sink throughout the entire world. Given that 70, roughly 70% 70 of our planet is covered in water, uh, it absorbs much of the CO2 that's in the atmosphere as well as the heat. And this is something that helps regulate the climate here on Earth. Now, as we can potentially see with uh, shifts in our carbon cycle due to climate change, we might find that there might be uh, different ways that the uh, carbon cycle in a deep ocean may be affected. So one of those ways that we could see is how uh, carbon is being shifted on a different time scales. Roughly when we're looking at rocks like these, these are created over millions of years. It takes an incredibly long time just to create one centimeter of rock, even from all the uh, the dense amount of forams or another organic matter that may exist throughout the oceans. And with the influx of carbon, we made, we are studying in other areas of how uh, that is being sequestered and sunk into the oceans and how fast the oceans can adapt to that. And one of the things that we see arise is ocean acidification, which is where uh, CO2 mixes with water and creates carbonic acid. And this can affect uh, places like shallow reefs and cause um, bleaching in corals. You can also see that it can affect the deep oceans by changing temperatures as well. As hot air rises and cold water, hot water rises and cold water sinks, uh, the more hot water you have, this might change the 
amount of cold water that also sinks, creating the ocean currents. And these ocean currents that may change may also shift the nutrients to our cycle throughout the deep ocean as well. Bear with me, it's running away a little. Definitely all true, Daniel, and and just going back to those uh, foraminifera, for example, that have carbonate in their shells and the ocean acidification you mentioned, um, for both for corals, for forums, for anything that u uses carbonate in uh, creating their shell, this kind of, uh, the more CO2 is being sequestered in the ocean, uh, the distribution of the different versions that CO2 or that carbon can take uh, in in seawater, the distribution of the di different versions changes, and one of those versions is carbonate. And, and as we have more and more CO2 being taken up by the ocean, less of less of the carbonate is proportionately being uh, staying in that version, in the carbonate version, which is a bad which is bad news for organisms that rely on there being certain concentrations of that carbonate in the water in order to make their shells. So that's kind of what we're talking about when we talk about how ocean acidification influences uh, carbonate organisms or calcium organisms with calcium carbonate skeletons or shells. Thank you for that, Lila. Yeah. Not quite yet, we got an hour left. Just come up uh, five meters there, Sarah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean. All right, uh, we want to try uh, landing on top of it and getting as close as we can. Roger. Okay, bring that iris down. Thank you. Yeah, so, so what we're trying to do now uh, for those online uh, is uh, uh, while um, our system is uh, far-sighted, uh, meaning that by design we we made it blind uh, to things that are two meters or closer. Uh, not blind, blind, but it just loses really the sensitivity. Uh, and that way that allows us to be more sensitive when we're farther away. Uh, that's a thing of optics uh, and the loss of physics. But uh, uh, we do have... A, a secret weapon, if you want, in, in this uh, instrument, um, which is a very intense, um, deep, ultraviolet uh, LED uh, system that can shine um, uh, uh, very bright uh, light in the UV region. And we build that to eventually prevent uh, biofouling or the growth of biofilms and bacteria on the glass of the, of the instrument. Can and we did that uh, because um, uh, the original mission for this system and the future mission will be to uh, to have it working permanently, subsea, uh, have it plug into a to a cable uh, so we can get uh, power and data, and just have it monitoring continuously the the change in uh, in hydrothermal uh, vents or chimneys over time. So uh, when you leave 
something subsists for a long time, and those of you who've done it know it very well. Life will start to to grow on it, uh, just colonize it uh, very quickly. In our case, if they colonize the window and they make it dark, then we lose our our science. So one way to remove that or to prevent that is to sterilize the the window continuously with ultraviolet light, uh, much like we've started to do after COVID uh, became uh, a thing. Uh, to sterilize uh, uh, surfaces with ultraviolet light, very effective way. Anyway, so we have this system in place uh, and we are gonna uh, try and uh, get as close as we can to, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the surface that uh, we scratched earlier uh, and we're gonna land on top of it and we're gonna flood it with this light, uh, hoping that uh, some of that light will travel just far enough into th through the water um, uh, into this uh, patch and we'll get some of the fluorescence from the organic uh, back uh, because organics, as you know by now, uh, are very fluorescent with deep ultraviolet and this is very deep ultraviolet so, uh, so we should be able to see uh, something there so uh, hold tight and we'll let you know what we'll find So do you want, um, we could probably get a better angle in Atlanta than that, right? You want to see out the aft of the sub, the dive bot going? Yeah, yeah, I correct. Assume. Yeah, yes. Yeah, if you can get us over here. And then, uh, yeah, come down uh, at least five meters there, Sarah, please. Kay. And then, Mike, uh, w once Sarah is uh, in, in place, uh, do, do you feel you feel this is landable? Oh. We're already landed. That's oh, you it. are? That's oh. the slope. So oh. that's, that's yeah, that's slope. the back. It's still up ah, like a okay. year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll do our best. Little, 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 little bit too far. Although, yeah, we're seeing uh, we're seeing some different stuff here. So maybe it's working after all. Uh. Yeah, that gives you 1.6 meters yep. according to the altimeter. Yep.
So as we're waiting here, we got some questions coming in from the chat here. So one of the questions is, can we differentiate naturally formed carbon and biologically formed carbon from dead life forms? And that is an excellent question. So as Pablo was saying earlier, we uh, use instruments like the Raman spectrometer to look at uh, carbon isotopes. And so life in particular likes to have certain isotopes. So sometimes uh, we'll look at either carbon or oxygen, because carbon uh, isotopes, like carbon-14, I believe, has a half-life of around 5,000 years or so, whereas oxygen-16 or 13, I believe, have like much longer um, half-lives. So we can use those to uh, date oxygen carbon ratios a lot. Uh, farther into the past. And when we're looking at what life, the kind of oxygen carbon life uh, likes is say carbon 12, which is just a uh, normal stable carbon without any extra neutrons, neutrons in its nucleus. Whereas say carbon 14 may have two extra neutrons and life would prefer carbon 14 over carbon, carbon 12 over carbon 14, given that it's a lot lighter. Same thing goes for oxygen isotopes. It prefers the lighter isotopes over the heavier isotopes. And so we can kind of look at the ratio of those um, different isotopes in uh, carbonate minerals and we can get, determine like whether it's of a biogenic, biogenic origin or of a naturally, more naturally occurring origin. And Leela is then kind of on a point with that. Does it sound right? Uh, yeah. All right. I think we're uh, we're done here. A uh, little inconclusive. We're both too far and too close. I think, with the way our <laughs> system is, uh, needs different glasses. That's the same as me. But uh, we can continue exploring the mound and we'll just uh, call out opportunities if we see interesting features or corals. Roger. All right, um, Will, since Herc has no samples, do you think that we can ascend faster than 17 meters. Don't assume more than 20. Okay. Um, so would we like to next try to put down the rock? Yeah, but do we not want the rock now? Or do we want to do the, 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 the bit with the rock? No, let's, uh, let, let's, instead, let's bring the rock up. I think we can do it here. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, right on. Okay, so then let's count the rock as a sample. Do you want the whole rock? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, then we'll count so that as a sample. So it is a sample. A sample. <laughs> Did you put a pseudo? No, I didn't. Okay, we'll find, yes. we will find when that was. I don't remember where we picked up the rock. Um, I can give you the coordinates in a second. Yeah. Sounds good. So we have about an hour and 20 minutes left. Oh. Okay, so Loopy at Is that end right? ended at around 2313. Yeah. You're going to end it at oh, 320? My bad, I'm doing it again. We have about 15 minutes. So around like 2310 to 2313 or something. Got it. We have 50 minutes left, my bad. And uh, the coordinates for that rock sample, which is 179, are... You don't have chat, right? I have to read it off to you? Yeah, I don't have the okay. chat. Okay, lat... Um, is decimal degrees okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, 8.186442. 442, oh geez. <laughs> and then I can give you longitude. Do you want me to 
pass a piece of paper over. That'd be easier. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, that works too. Here, I'll write Point it down. Eight, six. I'll write it down. This is just gonna take a second. And if anybody else wants to learn how to fire the laser, you can abandon your job and come on over here. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm abandoning job and going over there. Way to yep. leave us. Um, we'll Cheyenne, let you go first. If you wanna, here's the where are the coordinates on a paper. If you would like that. Uh, Do we know about how much, how big that rock is? Oh, um, yeah. Looking at the scaling lasers, maybe it's big. Like, go ahead, zoom in. I don't know. Maybe even 50 by 40 or something. Okay. 50 by 40 by 15. Got it. Um. That's cool. Could we zoom a bit further on that, actually? From Noid, I guess. Um. There's not a way to change like Good the time. There, I just, it's fine. If uh, it you can change the time, yeah. So how do you just do enter? It? You see the bottom, very bottom. Yeah. Oh. So enter the right time there. You learn something new every day. Okay. Good zoom. So, are there any other tasks, Pablo? No, that was it for y'all. All right. Then I guess we will just use the rest of the dive to look around as we were doing before. Uh, let's see what time it's... Is, does the seconds matter? The what, does what matter? The seconds. No, no, that's Got it. So maybe, yeah, let's, I guess continuing north, it almost looked like it flattened out, right? Well, we don't know. Why don't we do another move north and then maybe move west again, like okay. west-ish. Sounds good. And it's on the front porch. Sorry, what's the bearing? 30, thank you. Am I good to reset your DVL again? Yep. There we go. Can we look at that coral in front of us? Go ahead and zoom.
probably, hmm. Oh, it looks like it has another one of those little carnivorous jellies on it. The Agenona, I think those are called. All right, that's good, thank you. Hey, full wide. Do we want to keep heading north-ish, or do we want to start heading west? Um, let's take one, let me see, 290 is going to take us in that direction. I'll look out west. I don't see any ledge yeah. at all here yet. Maybe let's go a little bit further north, and I think it's probably even going to flatten out, but from there we can then go 290, and we'll start taking us away a bit again. Okay. All right, so everybody can keep their questions rolling in, and we'll be here to answer them. So one of the questions is, how is the food on the ship? <laughs> and that's a great question. So, yeah, our food is delicious, and it's prepared by our many chefs, who are very skilled and talented. And this food is pretty much served breakfast, lunch, and dinner on a very regular basis. So we are fed yeah, On a well. very regular basis. Yes, very regular. <laughs> Like, and they also provide snacks in between. So yesterday they provided us cinnamon rolls, which are very delicious. And a nice change of pace from the kind of food we've been eating. But I will say I am excited to get um, a nice meal once we get back to land. I've really been craving tacos for a while. <laughs> yeah, Mexican food would be good. Oh, nothing's like my grandmother's homemade tortillas. Ooh. I, want good. I want sushi. I want sushi. Poke. Yep. Poke is literally just like a sushi bowl, right? Almost like a burrito Pretty bowl. Much. Yeah. Deconstructed. Yeah. It's wonderful. Poke and boba tea. That's a perfect combo. Mm, yeah. So another question we got coming in, <clears throat> how are there, well, are there more creatures around particular minerals? 
So, yes, especially in deep ocean, we find uh, creatures have to find different ways of um, gaining energy from the nutrients in their surroundings because there's basically no sunlight down here. They don't have the sun to rely on. So there are many creatures down here that have filter feeders like corals and sponges and crinoids and others. And they center around ocean currents. Others uh, may reside around hydrothermal vents. We won't find any in this area, but they are usually around tectonically active areas. And they feed on the minerals that are exhumed from within the earth, like uh, methane and other inorganic materials that they then turn into biogenic materials to use for energy sources. And what was the question about? Sorry, I missed it. Are there are there more creatures around particular minerals in a deep mm. ocean? Can you think of any other minerals that... Yeah, um, just thinking about, I don't know, as far as minerals go, yeah, really, um, what comes to mind would be vent areas, but also even these ferromanganese crusts that we've been around... Um, I don't know, I guess maybe that falls under the type of thing they were asking about. Those can sometimes house interesting microbes um, that may actually play some role uh, expediting or facilitating somehow the precipitation of, of those crusts. And that's something that some uh, microbiologists are exploring, including uh, Beth Orcutt at, um, it, wow, why can I not remember the institution's name in Maine right now? Uh, let's, let's see, Bigelow, Bigelow Laboratory. Oh. Another one of those big urchins, I think. Those like venomous zoom? ones we saw, yeah, might as well. So we're not sampling the venomous? No, <laughs> I have no desire to have another one of those in the lab. Go ahead, Zoom. How did y'all know it was venomous? Um, Steve mentioned that last time something similar had been sampled, someone who had been handling it, you know, even with gloves, but the spines are <coughs> pokey, pokey through gloves, mm. uh, had had like an, a reaction to that. Oh. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. I thought you could see the two feet. Maybe. Yeah, you can oh, waving yeah. a little bit. So you not the all of them are spines. Yeah, you can see the peta something. Petasilaria. Yes, those. I think actually those are spines. Spines. I see spines in tube feet right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's hard to tell. <laughs> well, that's good there. All right. Well, what? Is the ship a? Uh, the ship is intending to go in the direction it's going. This was the transition yeah, to two ninety or. Where's it moving? Um, uh, no, it's losing. Yeah, it's, it's losing. losing it. Okay. Good eye. So it's losing it at like two ninety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe talk to them because yeah. they're not always aware. out on the nav screen somehow yeah. going into the slope yeah I'm coming up <clears throat> it's pretty benign oh. Sarah I don't it's just what is what?